I have written another article for New Eastern Outlook. It is titled U.S. Government Behind Campaign Violating North Korean Airspace. This is a story that has been bothering me for, for a while. I saw these Western news articles about North Korea sending balloons into South Korea laden with garbage, dumping garbage on the South Koreans, and they made it out as if this crazy reclusive uh, hermit kingdom was just randomly sending garbage into South Korea. And I, had, I know for a fact that South Korea, and, and more specifically, South Koreans backed by the U.S. government, have been sending balloons into North Korea for over a decade, uh, deliberately spreading what they themselves call subversive information to try to trigger regime change in North Korea. Uh, so I decided I would finally address this. I was asked by a, a, new j a news agency to comment on recent developments, this in particular here. Uh, October 11, 2024, North Korea accuses South of flying drones over Pyongyang. And so uh, drones is a, a bit of an escalation from these balloons. And we, re we remember from the U.S.'s own reaction to a Chinese weather balloon, uh, how bent out of shape they were. Why is North Korea not allowed to to be upset when someone is sending balloons over their territory. I don't understand the double standard. So let me read this article that I wrote. As always, I will show you the sources that I'm citing and add additional information when and if necessary. North Korea has recently warned against the use of drones over its sovereign airspace to spread subversive propaganda. CNN, in its October 11th, 2024 article, North Korea accuses South of flying drones over Pyongyang, reported North Korea accuses accused South Korea of flying propaganda-filled drones over Pyongyang and threatened retaliation, state media reported. The same article admits that this is a quote. South Korean activists and North Korean defectors have sent balloons to the north loaded with propaganda material criticizing leader Kim Jong-un, along with USB sticks filled with K-pop songs and South Korean television shows. What the article admitted is that this campaign is not an organic activity carried out by independent activists, but a campaign of subversion organized and funded by the U.S. government. How do we know that? Because they admitted it. This is an article in The Atlantic from all the way back in 2014, right here. We hacked North Korea with balloons and USB drives. So just open admission. This is Thor Halverson. He's the, the head of the Human Rights Foundation, and uh, they conduct the annual Oslo Freedom Forum. It is funded by the U.S. State Department. Every part of this is funded and directed by the U.S. State Department. Uh, he and his organization tried to serve as sort of an intermediary, so it's harder to trace back directly to the U.S. government. But even he himself, in this article that he wrote, admits that before he intervened and began supporting this program, the U.S. government provided support to these groups through the National Endowment for Democracy and the State Department's DRL programs. What is that? Uh, well, that's right here, and DRL stands for the Bureau of Democracy, Human Rights, and Labor Affairs. So this has always been a U.S. government program, and they use a variety of fronts to carry it out. So that's not as obvious and and absurd when you actually dig and see the information. And then the Western media's feigned ignorance over why North Korea is so angry doesn't seem so feigned. As, so as early as 2014, the Western media promoted what was called thumb drives. Actually, it's called flash drives for democracy. They have a whole website right here, the Human Rights Foundation. Uh, flash drives for freedom, actually, is what it's called. Uh, so I, I, I should have corrected. I should have caught that. Currently, we all only receive flash drives at our New York address because they're based in the U.S. This whole thing is based out of the U.S. has nothing to do with the Korean people and their best interests, regardless of which side of the border they're on on the peninsula. Uh, and so uh, here you just go down, you see all, all of the, the propaganda ceaselessly promoted by the U.S. State Department. And it's just laundered through these types of organizations, which if you do your digging, you will find are funded by the U.S. State Department. So uh, the Atlantic 
published an article, uh, Flash Drives for Freedom, by Human Rights Foundation founder Thor Halverson, which admits its balloons carry subversive information. That, that was his words, not mine, meant to undermine the North Korean government. It also admits that before Human Rights Foundation began its campaign, the U.S. government provided support for these groups through the National Endowment for Democracy and the State Department's DRL programs. The balloons were just one part of a much wider campaign of subversion and ultimately regime change. Human Rights Foundation also organizes the annual Oslo Freedom Forum. Name badge. There is your name tag. Thank you so much. Program of events. So this is all the information for me. The revolution will be organized. This year we wanted to first of all welcome you all. And From all over the world, the aristocracy of activists gathers in Oslo to tell their stories share ideas and learn. In the basement of this four-star hotel, human rights activists come to what feels a bit like a school for revolution. This may not evoke the spirit of the barricades, but the teaching here is to be successful, to topple a government for good. You have to be organized and to plan meticulously. And activists here have been involved in helping to organize the current protests in Hong Kong. Their plan to put thousands of people on the streets of the territory was in fact hatched nearly two years ago. We've been told many of Hong Kong's demonstrators were trained long before taking to the streets. Protesters were, uh, were, were taught how to behave during a protest, so how to keep ranks, how to uh, speak to police, um, how to uh, manage their own movement, how to use marshals within their movement. So these are people who are specially trained. It's also, you know, how to behave when arrested. Uh, you know, practical things like the need for food and water, you know, um, that uh, movement can last longer when people are taken care of. And also how to manage a water cannon being used against you and other types of police violence. It's meticulous. Absolutely. And if you go to the Oslo Freedom Forum's website, if you look at who is funding the, the annual event, you will see the Norwegian government, so a, a, a Western government, Western corporations, but also the Freedom Fund. Who is the key investors of the Freedom Fund? Well, it's right here. Come down here, and it includes the United States Department of State. So Human Rights Foundation also organizes the annual Oslo Freedom Forum, funded in part by the Freedom Fund, which includes the U.S. State Department as a key investor. The Oslo Freedom Forum is a continuation of U.S. State Department-funded training programs, gathering agitators from around the globe, training, funding, and equipping them to then return to their respective nations and attempt to overthrow them. Uh, you will remember this article. I have, uh, I have cited it very often. New York Times, 2011. U.S. groups helped nurture Arab uprisings. Do, do you remember when it first began, how the U.S. government pretended it was a complete shock to them that this was happening? And the Western media deliberately tried to convince the public that the Arab uprising was actually anti-U.S., anti-Israel, to get everyone behind it. But it turned out that they had organized it years in advance. They admitted a number of the groups and individuals directly involved in the revolts and reforms sweeping the region received training and financing from groups like the International Republic Institute, the National Democratic Institute, Freedom House. Uh, they're all based in Washington, according to interviews in recent weeks and American diplomatic cables obtained by WikiLeaks. And even before that, I had been reporting on this because I looked at the, the people and organizations leading the revolts, and you could see the, the trail of US government funding behind them for years, years and years. Uh, down here, it says, these institutes that they just listed up here are financed through the National Endowment for Democracy. The endowment receives about 100 million annually from Congress. Freedom House also gets the bulk of its money from Ameri the American government, mainly from the State Department. And down here it says, among those sponsoring the meetings, they said some Egyptian youth leaders and, and many others attended a 2008 technology meeting in New York. And among the, those sponsoring the event was Facebook, Google, MTV, Columbia Law School, and the State Department. And uh, the 2008 meeting wasn't the only one. They had one annually, just like the Oslo Freedom Forum. And the US State Department played a central role. Their, their personnel were overseeing the events. And then Secretary of State 
Hillary Clinton would actually Skype in and deliver an address to the attendees. And so that's all the Oslo Freedom Forum is. It is a continuation of that. They've been doing it for years and years. They bring in agitators, they train, equip, fund them, send them back to their country to overthrow them. That's what they were doing in the Middle East and North Africa. That's what they are doing here in Asia. This is what they're doing uh, to target North Korea. That is what the balloon campaign is a part of. So uh, in the article, I talk about the New York Times article. I read those quotes. Clearly, Human Rights Foundation serves as an intermediary, continuing U.S. government-funded sedition around the globe in a way more difficult to trace directly back to the U.S. government itself. Its objectives, none nonetheless, remain to undermine, divide, destabilize, and overthrow nations targeted by the U.S. State Department for regime change, including North Korea. Considering the aftermath of the admittedly U.S.-engineered Arab Spring, which included the full-scale destruction of Libya, a deeply divided Egypt, which is, is still suffering to this day from what was done in 2011, and a nearly destroyed Syria, which is still at war and partially occupied by the U.S. military, North Korea's concerns regarding similar U.S. government-sponsored activities being aimed at it falls far short of an overreaction. So the Western media acts as if North Korea is imagining all of this. It's just balloons. What are they worried about? Well, they're worried about becoming the next Libya or Syria. That's what they're actually worried about. The CNN article reporting on North Korea's recent warnings notes that previous South Korean governments prohibited the use of balloons to spread subversive information across North Korea, recognizing the role it plays in damaging relations and raising tensions. So the South Korean government, a, pr a previous government, passed a law prohibiting this, but the U.S.-backed agitators continued doing it anyway because the U.S. doesn't care about what a nation actually wants, it will continue doing whatever it feels like regardless. This decision has since been reversed by a client regime more obedient to watch shitting. So the more, the more recent government has reversed this and they're eagerly doing what the US tells them to do, which is to raise tensions with North Korea. And that's why this, this balloon campaign continues. This years-long campaign of subversion aimed at North Korea eventually prompted North Korea itself to respond with its own balloons laden with garbage. And I like to think that they're putting garbage in it to basically say, you are sending this US-funded garbage to us, this information that is uh, metaphorically garbage. We will send you literal garbage. At least that's how I, I interpreted it. The collective Western media depicted this action out of context, omitting the U.S. government-sponsored program targeting North Korea for over a decade, or that the ultimate goal of the campaign is Arab Spring-style regime change, which, which will also include destroying most of the country and the people living in it. In 2023, when a Chinese weather balloon flew off course across the continental United States, headlines were undulated with hysteria and hostility toward China. The U.S. Department of Defense, without providing evidence, identified it as a high-altitude surveillance balloon, implying that it was spying on American territory. F-22 fighter jets were eventually deployed, launching air-to-air -air missiles. Uh, at least one of them missed the balloon, uh, destroying it off the eastern U.S. coast. Clearly, the U.S. government itself desires other nations to respect its airspace, considering the unauthorized flight of any object, including balloons, as a potential danger to both national security and public safety. Yet it is funding a program admittedly designed to subvert the government of a sovereign nation by flying balloons and now most likely drones into its airspace, uh, obviously endangering both national security and public safety. South Koreans may be convinced, or at least some South Koreans may be convinced, that the greatest obstacle to peace on the Korean peninsula lies across the northern border. But the U.S. has repeatedly demonstrated that it itself obstructs peace for the Korean people, and deliberately so. Continued tensions allows the U.S. to perpetually justify the presence of its military on the peninsula, not to defend South Korea from North Korea, but to encircle and threaten South Korea's largest trade partner, China. While Washington has appointed itself underwriter stability on the Korean Peninsula, peace cannot be achieved as long as this deliberate obstruction to it remains stubbornly entrenched upon it. And the U.S. uses the exact same strategy in Europe, creating tension with Russia to justify its military presence and its reigning primacy over that region. And it's doing the exact same thing in the Middle East. It pretends that it's trying to broker peace between Israel and the Palestinians when it is the, the central driving factor 
uh, behind perpetual war. And it does this to create a strategy of tension, to create a pretext for its military presence in these areas, and to create these dynamics where it can work on regime change against nations in each of these targeted regions. Uh, so that's where the article ends. And this is something that we obviously have to keep an eye on. I think North Korea, despite all of the claims by the US government and the Western media that it's irrational, it has shown infinite patience uh, with the United States and its proxies, the provocations that they, they consistently commit themselves to. I believe they will make these threats. What they're actually going to do is enhance security and do something to try to deal with this, this constant violation of their airspace and this constant threat to their national security and also public safety. If, a, if an errant Chinese weather balloon was a big enough threat to mobilize warplanes in the United States, I think North Korea has a right to be upset about a government on the other side of the planet funding agitators to send balloons and now drones into their airspace. You're not even allowed to fly drones in, say, a, a city, any, pretty much anywhere in the world without authorization. Why should North Korea be okay with U.S. government-funded agitators flying drones over their cities? Just doesn't make any sense at all. So I will continue keeping an eye on this and obviously all the other conflicts, the U.S. and its its desire for primacy over the planet uh, continuously provokes. Uh, until then, if you thought this video was useful, please like and share. Think about subscribing. It's free to do. It helps the channel grow. Check the video description below for other places you can find and follow my work. Absolutely everything is on Telegram. I also back up all of my videos on Rumble. If anything happens to my YouTube channel, that's where you can find and follow my work. In the video description will be the link to the article that I read, all the, the sources that I cited, as well as for ways you could help support my work. I do not monetize any of my social media platforms. If ads pop up, feel free to skip them. If you do want to help support my work, please do so through Buy Me A Coffee and also Patreon. To everyone who has been helping out, whether it's a one-time donation or donations month to month, or even if you have no additional resources and you're sharing my work with other people out there, all of that is greatly appreciated. That is what makes this work possible. So thank you, and as always, thank you for watching.